SS Ceramic berths at Wellington's overseas terminal, bringing New Zealand's new Governor-General designate, Sir Arthur Porritt. Also greeted by the official welcoming party are Lady Porritt and attractive 19-year-old daughter, Joanna. A morning of crowds, procession and ceremony. An official welcome at Wellington's Town Hall and a visit to the War Memorial. Then it's on to Parliament Buildings, where Sir Arthur will be sworn in to the office he's to hold for the next five years. There's a large lunchtime crowd on hand to see the first New Zealand-born Governor-General designate and his lady. The oath of office. I, Arthur S. P. Porritt, do solemnly swear that I will duly execute the office of Governor-General and Commander-in-Chief in and over New Zealand and that I will duly and impartially administer justice therein. So help me God. The vice-regal standard is broken out, the oath is signed in the presence of the Chief Justice and Sir Arthur Porritt becomes our 11th Governor-General. Maori people from all over New Zealand gather at Tauranga on Labour Weekend for a hui, the annual Maori cultural festival. <coughs> Visitors are greeted by members of the Ngāti Ranganui and Ngāti Rangi tribes at Judea Pa where many will be staying as guests for the two days of the festival. The chief, Mr. Hare Piahana, welcomes them onto the marae. Inside the Judea meeting house, the Wari Hui. Come on, you kids. Get to the mic. Breakfast is at seven. Take a time. Not come on time, not now time. Take a time. With the increasing diffusion of the Maori people through the cities, opportunities for getting together in large national gatherings are now infrequent. An occasion such as this is a valuable chance to meet other people, to renew acquaintances and to cement friendships. For the young people especially, it emphasizes the ties that bind together the Maori community. For those elders who still remember the past, it provides a nostalgic, even sad awareness of the gradual erosion of early tradition and custom. This is also a time for serious discussion. The Maori Land Bill always arouses mixed feelings on the part of those involved. Maori art, like the Maori way of life itself, represents something quite different from what it was even one generation ago. The continuing effect of Pākehā influences on traditional music making has resulted in a form that bears resemblance to both, but still remains different from either. It's a new and hybrid form. Nowadays, too, even though some of the costumes are authentic, tattoos are painted on, and the poise are plastic.
a chant by the older women wearing symbolic headdresses honors the spirits of their ancestors. On this last day of the festival, everyone makes a pilgrimage to the site of an historic par on the summit of Mount Monganui, the peak which lies just across the harbor from Tarong. The interdenominational service commemorates the landing of the great fleet in this country, Aotearoa, over 600 years ago. I'd like to say something to give you understanding how we came on this spot. We left Hawaii in the year 1350 and landed here on the same year and reoccupy this ground. And several canoe landed in different places. One, Takitimu landed in here. The next, Tarawa landed at Makitu. And then the other one, Matatua landed in Fakatane. The minister offers a prayer for the continued brotherhood of the Māori people. Amen. activities conclude, hundreds of Māori folk representing many different tribes all over New Zealand have met together to briefly but strongly reaffirm their feeling of Māori Tāna. Yeah.